Today I'll show you how to add an internal oil line to your AMC V8 engine, try and preserve them main bearings a little bit, and hopefully add a little bit of life to your engine. Let's check it out. What we're going to do is drill a hole back here and up here at the front of the motor, add some AN fittings, and then plumb a line to take high pressure oil from the front of the block and get it to the back. Now you can go on the internet. I don't recommend it, but you can read on and on and on about the different oil modifications and things you should do to these AMC motors to make improvements to the oiling system. Now, while all of them are legit and depending on your build, you might want to do some of them, but for our build, this motor is going into a CJ7 Jeep. We got a mild cam, stock heads, upgraded intake, and headers. So it's a really mild build. In my opinion, this is the only oil modification that's really necessary. We won't dig into too many opinions here. I'll just show you guys why I think this one makes the most sense, and then go ahead and show you how to do it. On your AMC V8, your oil pump is built into the timing cover right here. Oil is going to come in from the pickup tube in your oil pan through this port get pressurized by the oil pump and send it back into the block through this port. Then it's gonna make a hard turn and come up here and split down into your two main oil galleries, which are right here that supply oil to the lifters. And you can kind of see where, the, where it's kind of humped up here between each lifter bore. That's where the gallery is. And also in the back of the motor, the two plugs for the main galleries. That's all fine and good. So here's where the issue comes into play. On the driver's side oil gallery here, the only responsibility of that oil passage is to oil the lifters and the valve train. Whereas on the passenger side, not only does it have to oil the lifters and the valve train, it also has to oil the cam bearings and the main bearings. So as you can see on the cam bearing, the oiling hole is right here on the passenger side, and that's the same with all of them. Then let me flip this motor. So now that passenger side's over here, and I don't know if you can tell or not, but all the oiling holes for the main bearings they're all shooting off to that passenger side as well. So what everything I just said translates to is the driver side is getting sufficient oil all the time. Where the passenger side, when high pressure oil is coming through here, by the time it gets to the back, because of all the different things it's oiling, um, especially at higher RPMs, you can start to get starved for oil on your rearmost cam bearings and main bearings. And that's why plumbing a line from here where it's high pressure back here to this oil gallery will help supplement that oil loss that you get on this side. So, let me show you how to do it. Reckon I'll show you what you need real quick. Got a punch and a hammer so you can mark where you're gonna be drilling into your block. Then we'll do an eighth inch pilot hole followed by a 7 16th inch hole hole. Then we got some oil to keep these drill bits lubed up in our drill. Quarter inch NPT tap with appropriate socket. Then we got three foot of 6AN braided oil line and Earl's 6AN to quarter inch MPT fittings. Part numbers will also be in the description. Real quick about these fittings though, a lot of stuff was not in stock on the Earl's website. This fitting is all one piece. It's the one that's gonna go up front right here. It's just quarter inch MPT to the 6AN hose end. This one I kind of had to piece together. Usually you should be able to just get it all as one piece, quarter inch NPT to a 90 degree to a 6AN hose line, but I had to buy it in three different pieces. So we have a quarter inch to 6AN male, then a 6AN female, 90 degree 6AN male, and then the 6AN hose line. Take a shot every time I say 6AN, holy crap. This one, when it's all put together, will go back here and kind of point towards your front one. And the reason we use an NPT tap, which is National Pipe Thread, is because it's tapered. So it's going to be wider at the top, skinnier at the bottom. That means this fitting will actually get tight in the hole. So we're not just going to be running the tap all the way down. We're going to do a little bit, then test fit, see where it gets tight. Because what we don't want happening is the fitting itself obstructing the oil gallery. So we'll actually probably end up having some of these threads showing at the top. Also worth mentioning real quick, we're gonna have to end up modifying our valley pan gasket here. I'm gonna end up waiting till I have the heads on, that way this thing is formed and shaped where it's supposed to be, but we'll end up notching that out right there and then somewhere around where that one is, just getting the Dremel and squaring it out. Leads me to my next point. I'm not sure, me personally, I would try this on a motor that's in the Jeep and running already. This is a fresh rebuild. After all these holes are drilled, I'm gonna be cleaning the block one more time before assembly. I don't know how I'd feel about drilling in here on a motor you're just slapping back together. I mean, you could vacuum in there and try your best, but disclaimer, I guess. Do what you want. 
I'm just showing you how to do it. Let's do it. We'll start with the back one here. We wanna make our hole right in the center of that hump, which is that passenger side oil gallery. Center it up between the two lifter bores and then center of that oil gallery. Let's do an eighth inch pilot hole. We've got some oil here. And we're through. Make sure you get all that out. Make sure your pilot hole is centered on that oil gallery. Then you can step it up to your 7 16 bit. Run a magnet down here quick. But like I said, this block's getting cleaned one more time. And you can see down there into the oil gallery, we're ready to go ahead and tap our quarter inch NPT threads, making sure we start this thing nice and straight keep that oiled up as well run it out keep those threads clear we made some good progress I chased the threads, so let's go ahead and test fit our NPT fitting and you don't want to tighten these too much because of that tapered hole the farther you drive that fitting down in there the more it's gonna be pressing out on the walls just take her easy now, what I'm gonna do here, it's convenient because this is a black fitting and you can see exactly how deep it went. And then we can kind of compare that to how thick the cast iron is here going down to that oil gallery. And we'll try and match that thickness on here. That way it's nice and flush with the oil gallery. You should also keep an eye on the depth of the fitting by removing the main oil gallery plug. There's one right here. And I removed the front one also just so more light can get through here. When you look down the hole, you want to see that fitting just barely protrude. As soon as you catch a glimpse of that fitting, you're there. So we'll keep tapping a little bit. I can't quite see it yet. I was able to tap the hole a little bit farther, but now you probably can't see it. But the tap is bottomed out in the oil gallery. And we don't want to crank on it too much or we'll risk uh, stripping out those threads. So we're going to back this out, chase them. We'll test fit the fitting in there one more time. Got this fitting tightened up and I took another look down the oil gallery and I still can't quite see it. But we're actually almost bottomed out on the threads on the fitting itself anyway. So it is plenty far in there. It's, it's tight. It's not going anywhere and no restriction in the oil gallery. So this rear fitting is good to go. I'm gonna be leaving these oil gallery plugs out. That way when I do my final cleaning, I can uh, get cleaner in here and pass it all the way through the block and get all that crap out of there. And here's what it looks like with that other fitting kind of mocked up on there. This one's good to go. Let's move on to the front. We'll start by removing these two oil gallery plugs, eight millimeter Allen. This hole is going to need to go right where these two galleries intersect just to give you guys a little bit of a visual center of the hole and then just kind of straight at a 45. Same with this one and right where they meet is where we're going to drill. Eighth inch pilot hole just like before. Then before you do your 7 16th hole just verify that you're at that intersecting point for these two galleries which we are. Just like on the back, I was running the tap in and checking it and then going a little bit deeper, checking again and the tap bottomed out again. So we'll see where the fitting lies. We'll get it snugged up all the way again. That's actually perfect. That's pretty much flush with the, uh, with the gallery there. We're gonna call that one good. What I'll do now is run these fittings in their spot and I'll run them all the way down and back out probably two or three times just to make sure that these threads are completely deburred. Run them in and out a couple times and then we'll measure for our line. With both fittings installed, that's what it'll look like. So we'll take off these hose ends, make sure everything's tight so you can accurately measure. Then we'll just put our AN line right where it's gonna go. Kind of grab a rough measurement here, leaving a little bit of slack. And you wanna mark where this tapered edge starts not at the end of the fitting. We'll get a fresh cut on the one side here. To prevent the fraying like that, we're gonna tightly wrap some electrical tape around the AN line. And you can use a hacksaw, or I'll be using a cutoff wheel, works just as well. Got a nice clean cut there. I did stretch it out and measure it. It was 11 and a half inches right there. And then we'll put the tape right over that. We got the fitting for the rear of the block here, and we're gonna get it on the hose a while so we can unwrap our tape. As you can see, minimal fraying, then we'll take our hose end and get it started on, wiggle it on there until it bottoms out. And you can see there's a little bit of a ledge that it bottoms out on once you have it in the right spot. All right, that should be good. Now that we got that hose end on there, we'll get her in the vise and we'll mark the hose where it meets the fitting. That way we can keep an eye on it and see if it slips out. It takes a little bit of downward pressure to get it going. 
There we have it. Our hose didn't slide out any. The back fitting is completely tight, good to go. On the front, we'll do the same thing. Mark the hose fitting is completely seated and then we'll get it on there. Tighten it up right here, making sure you're keeping pressure on the hose. And from that point, you would just grab your other wrench and tighten them against each other. Get it nice and snug and you're good to go. Now that I got it mocked up and everything fits good, I'm gonna take everything out and get the block ready for its final cleaning. This 90 can just stay together as one unit. Now when you're shopping around for your AN fittings, go ahead and check to see if they have one that's like one piece so you don't have to get three different pieces like I did. So that's ready to go. Also would recommend uh, cleaning this out. Uh, rubber shavings or little metal shavings from the liner might have got in there. So make sure you clean that up before you run it. Now I will say after this project is now done and we did all that drilling, I definitely would not recommend doing this uh, with the motor in the Jeep or whatever you got as a runner. Definitely keeping all of these oil gallery plugs out when I do the final cleaning and making sure I spray in there and make sure everything is clean because a lot of stuff got gooped up in there. A lot of little metal shavings you can't even see but if you run your finger in there, they're there. So make sure you clean this thing up real good. And one more thing, pretty common practice, I'm also going to be doing it and that's adding an extra quart of oil to these engines just to be sure that it doesn't get starved. So instead of five quarts, we'll be putting in six. Other than that, that should pretty much wrap it up for this one, guys. That is what your complete line is gonna look like. I hope this video was useful for any of you guys building an AMC motor. Let me know what you got, what you're putting it in. Put it in the comments. I'll be doing videos on the full build of this motor, so stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.